Good afternoon, everybody. To, uh, welcome to a random moment with Pastor David. Good afternoon, Pastor yeah. David. How you doing, John? This is like our fifth take. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do our blooper series. <laughs> you know, uh, I want to welcome you guys for joining joining us this uh, this afternoon. You know, Pastor, uh, when we think about the timeline of our church here, we've been coming up in November. We've been coming. We've been actually on this property for going on thirty years. For thirty years in November. And then even more than that. You've been teaching the God. You've been teaching the Word of God for forty-nine years, ordained as forty-three years. So you see that there is some faithfulness in what you've been doing. And one of the things that, even as we celebrated Pastor's Appreciation Day, one of the things I like to see on a lot of the posts were there are a couple of things that really stood out to me, and it's your diligence to teach the Word of God. And so when you think about all the number of years that you've been teaching God's Word. What has kept you faithful and on track on teaching God's Word only? Okay, i am just add a couple things first to what we just said. Um, yeah, we started this church 41 years ago. We were um, meeting in Ontario for the first 10 years, going on 11 years. And then for 30 years, we've been um, in this area. So it's been a total of 41 years of pastoral ministry to this church. Prior to that, I was an assisting pastor for two years. And so for 40, uh, 43 years, I've been ordained as a pastor. 49 years, I've been teaching the Word of God. And so the question relates to what has kept me um, solid in this. It's, it's the knowledge that Jesus Christ said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He didn't say, go into all the world and you know, anything else. He said, go out into all the world and preach the gospel. He said, teaching them, you know, all things that I've commanded you. And so what has kept me going for all these years has been an attempt to be obedient to God's word. And so in a time when there are many distractions and, and there are numerous churches that for whatever reason, perhaps they think they've been raised up for such a time as this, uh, there are many churches, and some are fairly well known, uh, that have deviated from the teaching of the Word of God and have moved into other kinds of things, I guess, to attract people or with the belief that they're somehow equipping them uh, for works of service by teaching them to vote or who, who, who the pastor thinks is the best candidate and all of that. Um, I, I have a different experience, and that is, you know, I'm, I'm 72 years old. I'm not a young man anymore. I've been a Christian for uh, going on 52 years in a couple months. And that has given to me uh, the advantage of being able to look back over numerous years and to see how, how veering from the path of teaching has affected the church. When I first got saved and began to minister, there was a particular pastor in the United States who had, uh, who had a TV program Sunday nights, and I watched him on occasion. I respected and admired him quite a bit. But I also noticed that he really wasn't a teacher of the word so much as a political activist. And I began to wonder, even as a new Christian, if that kind of message would have saved me, if that kind of message would have attracted me to 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 come to faith in Christ. And the fact is, no, what that would have been is perhaps an attraction to conservative politics, to, to an allegiance to the Constitution and uh, the Declaration of Independence and all of that. It would have actually veered, I'd have veered from my, my belief that God's word is sufficient and God's uh, word is able to restore my soul, as the psalmist said, because God's word is able to convert, is able to restore, refresh. Um, it would have taken me away from preaching the uh, answer to man's sin, and it would have caused me to go into a direction of trying to think that, or trying to teach that somehow there is going to be an answer through voting the right people in, because this person I'm thinking of, whom I, again, I did respect very highly, but what he did was he started a moral majority and he tried to to get the church on board as if we the silent majority were also the moral majority and before you know it the um, 
the evangelism, the spirit of reaching the lost, giving them a message that would save them and and transform them, their families, and the nation they lived in, that was lost. I see some doing that to this day, and the gullible sheep who think that they already know these things give us something new, something fresh, prophesy to us smooth things, you know, things that we want to hear. I think that has taken the church, John, in many places that they didn't need to go. And so what has kept me? What has kept me strong is seeing a, a drug addict like yourself. And that you, were, you were a mess when you first came here. To seeing someone who was addicted and, and a lying, lying thief and immoral man. To see God grab hold of that life and transform them into a man who has a beautiful wife and beautiful kids and, and a, a, a great reputation here. Uh, it, it's seeing guys who have given me their testimony where they have said, I killed him. And, and to see him feeding the hungry and clothing the poor, you know, to seeing brawlers, guys who, who I wouldn't have messed around with on my best day, to see them crying and, and tell me how much they love me because of what God has done in their life. Uh, you, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how any man would prefer hearing people say, I'm glad I voted for that guy to be governor. I don't understand that. I guess I'm, I'm just, um, just beyond repair, John. I, I will not and do not and will not ever endorse that kind of ministry. I cannot because the answer is, is not gonna be political. The answer is not gonna be some trend. It, the answer is Christ always has been. Now, we apply the things that we see in the world today. We, we look at what Paul says concerning the last days. We apply that to our situation. Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. We see the narcissism and the materialism. We can address those things as we teach the word of God. But, you know, we'll be looking tonight, or rather we looked last night on Wednesday. We'll be looking at, at the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's what God has given to us. And so as I read my Bible, and I know that the apostle Peter was persecuted, that Paul lost his life under the, the persecution of believers, but I don't see anything in his teachings that tell me that he was proclaiming a political answer of some sort, but he kept our eyes on Jesus. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation to anyone who believes, to the Jew first and also the Gentile. When you see him saying the gospel is what God has given to us to proclaim, I will remain faithful to that. Now, that's unpopular, and there are people who argue. These are people who don't have a church, they don't pastor, they don't have any ministry at all. They think that they're changing the world by shouting amen when the pastor tells them to. And I have to be honest with you, we've seen many, many ex-members of our fellowship who are not doing well, who go to church, but they're spiritually not doing well, because they're not being taught how to live for Christ. I see that. I've been at it a long time, here for 41 years. I've seen thousands of people over the years, John. Some have remained with the, the word of the Lord and have grown and, and have become testimonies of his grace, and others have floated off and have become anything but a great testimony for Jesus. I, that's why for all these years I have, I have held my hand to that plow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna plow a straight, furrow in that field and and i do so because i've been commanded to Amen. Amen. and that i think is a problem with many churches today i hate to say it but it's true i think i have the authority to say that after these years i've been around a long time i've seen a lot and uh that's that's why what, what has kept me faithful i see transformed lives by the 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 power of jesus i have never seen a transformed life because they voted for the right guy Amen, Pastor. And, and so many of us, as you mentioned here at the church, uh, or even yourself, are testimonies to God's grace and mercy. Amen to that. And it wasn't because of a, a, a use of a platform for anything else but God's, God's Word. That's why I thank God for my Pastor Chuck Smith, who taught us give the Word. Amen. Teach the Word. Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor David, for sharing. I do want to invite you to come out and join us on Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10.45. If you happen to miss... Last night's message on Sword of the Spirit, you can actually go to our Facebook page or our YouTube page and, and, uh, and check it out. It's a great message. And then also, uh, please keep Pastor David in prayer as you're 
heading to Mexico. Yeah. And so uh, be there for a couple of days speaking to... Pastoring, uh, pastoring pastors, right. that's what God has called me to do. I'll be ministering to the northern Mexico pastors from Calvary Chapel. Well, it'll be a great time. I love it. Yes, and so keep, uh, keep him in prayer and uh, look forward to seeing you on Sunday. COVID restrictions have lifted. Come join us. Come live. Yes, yes. Enjoy the worship and getting God's word and fellowship. Amen. And then we also, I always want to keep this in front of you, and I'm going to do it until we leave. Mm. Uh, Israel. We have Israel come up. You can still register online. Uh, I gave on our report today. It looks like there's maybe a couple of more. It's, it's getting more people. Good. And so I uh, would love to have you guys come join Pastor David and Marie on this trip. And it's, uh, it's definitely a life changer. Amen. And so thank you, Pastor. Thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you. And we'll see you soon.